Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our global Nimble community. My name is John Ferrara, the CEO of Nimble, and this is a special day. Uh, this is uh, another in the series of our uh, expert influencer webinars where we inspire and educate our community about how they can become better, smarter, faster in the areas of promise of our product. So we bring in thought leaders in social sales and marketing to teach you how to fish because we sell fishing poles and uh and shane is one of the best teachers i know say hello shane hello and good morning good afternoon good evening and so let's learn a little bit about you shane let's go to your bio so as i shared earlier when i started to first adopt social media i started to share content of people that uh resonated with me because i'm not a writer i'm a computer science math major and so rather than me writing content about social sales and marketing, I went and swam in the social river and identified content that was resonating with me. And I began to share that content. And Shane, you were one of the people that uh, resonated with me and I began to share your content and that's how we connected. And I shared your content because you have been out there for the past 25 years teaching other people around the world, organizations, how they can um, adapt to the new digital world and be more effective with their sales organization. So um, kudos to you, my friend. Thank you. And for those that don't know uh, about me, uh, my name's John Ferrar. As I said, I'm the CEO of Nimble. I think I've been building relationship management systems since I was a baby. That's not true, I, uh, really only since I was 28, but I guess I was a baby at 28. Um, and it started with my own need, because I think that that's the best products that happen. They come from your own needs uh, because you're passionate about it and you understand the problem. And I was a salesperson in the field, managing my contacts with paper, something called a day timer. And I did my forecast on spreadsheets and I said, there's gotta be a better way, I couldn't find it. So I pioneered, contact management and, so, and CRM before Outlook or Salesforce existed with Goldmine, and I'm back at it with uh, Nimble. And uh, with that, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. As I shared earlier, this is a series of expert webinars. We also do regular webinars on just how to use Nimble. If you want to attend one of those webinars or watch a recording, go to nimble.com forward slash company webinars, and you can sign up for those. And with that, Shane, um, uh, let's look at the agenda. And before I give it to you, <clears throat> I just want to remind you all that we all learn from questions. Uh, it's the questions that make us all think. And so uh, during Shane's presentation, please, please, please ask questions in the uh, question box in the GoToWebinar control panel where you typed in your location earlier. And we will compile those questions in the background, answer as many as we can and uh, answer them at the end. So with that, uh, take us away, Shane. Fantastic. John and the Nimble team, thank you again for inviting me here to collaborate and share, you know, really about something that I'm very passionate about. As you said, I've been doing this for 25 years. Uh, when I started off uh, in sales uh, and launching my own business, you know, one of the things was, uh, you know, I began to use digital tools early. Uh, in fact, uh, I was an old school spammer originally. Now, if you don't know what old school spam was, that's where you stay up all the, all night and you fax people about your business. So that's how long I've been broadcasting. Uh, but realistically here, I actually started uh, blogging in 2002, podcasting in 2004, and that's when I began to really see the power of digital first or digital platforms to access audiences connections and relationships that you just never discover. And so the world of blogging, Google, uh, and then the iTunes platform was my first foray. And now, you know, fast forward more than a decade later, and we're in this truly digital first environment. So today, uh, we're gonna talk about really four key areas. One of them is the new virtual sales competency map. And it's really, it doesn't replace the old sales competencies or the important ones we have, the foundational ones, but it does, it is a layer on top that we need now that we're remote and digital for salespeople. So I'm gonna share this map somewhat in depth with you today and spend a fair bit of time on it. I'm also gonna talk about some trends and shifts 
in sales and sales management in 2021 and beyond. There were shifts in 2020, but 2021 is different and beyond is different. I want to talk about how we slightly recalibrate our outlook to be more effective. Then I want to get into how to future-proof your sales career. And in reality, if we look at the virtual sales competency map and we embrace these new trends, we are future-proofing ourselves. And then I'm going to finish off with this piece, which is really around tips and insights on staying balanced, healthy, and productive as a remote digital first salesperson. Um, I often like to joke that sometimes we think we're social networking, but we're actually social not working. And this can be a thing. And so how do we how do we create some balance so that we're productive and we're doing things that are meaningful for us and the people we're trying to engage? So this is uh, one of my favorite quotes from Jack Welch. And he said, if the rate of change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside, the end is near. And this really speaks to, and I love to share this quote for years with sales organizations, talking about the fact that the world is moving digital first from a sales perspective, and that senior management, as they you know, encourage us to shift the way we sell and bring in new processes, new technology, they're not sitting back trying to dream up new ways to disrupt our lives. They're actually really trying to keep the organization competitive and responsive to what's happening outside. Now, with that said, the story's changed. You know, um, CEO of Shopify, Toby Lutke, recently said that we've gone through what essentially is 10 years of digital transformation uh, in a year. And so this is really what we've experienced, where now our decision makers, our buyers are all remote, they're digital, and where digital channels used to be a nice to have. Twitter was a nice to have, right? So was LinkedIn. There were great additional channels to traditional selling and traditional commerce and traditional retail and now they are the primary channel and a lot of us have only had a very short period of time to adapt to this so here's our shifts from 2020 to 2021 so what has changed so 2020 was the year of disruption and it was something that you could not opt to not participate in with with lockdowns the pandemic and everyone moving into the cloud and remote and decisions making uh, being happened digitally, uh, from this perspective, there's been some major shifts. So I kind of want to walk through them quickly here. And so 2020, we were disrupted. So a lot of organizations that you were selling to, your customers and individual consumers were disrupted. But what's occurred, what I've found in my client base and my clients' clients and in the marketplace, is the organizations that survived 2020 are no longer disrupted in their energy or what's going on within their organization they have now become resilient and agile they're more ready they're more ready to adopt shift and change and the ones that have succeeded and are moving forward have really embraced things to become more resilient and agile so your value proposition in 2020 helping the disrupted enterprise or individual is really no longer relevant we need to be thinking about helping people with their roadmaps forward in 2020, we were all reacting, right? This was a reaction to what was happening in business and in our personal lives. And now many of us have embraced the fact that we're in a place of permanent redirection. We did a poll here just before we kicked off the webinar with the live attendees, of course. And one of the things we looked at was, you know, where are you at right now? Do you want to go back to the way it was before? And how did you cope? And most are saying, I'm not that excited about going back to the way it was before. And in fact, I've adjusted quite well and I'm more efficient. And so from this perspective, a lot of people in the marketplace are this way. And so really for us as sales professionals, we've got to think permanent redirection. We are now in this digital first remote selling environment. Digital replaced personal in 2020 for many of us. So we no longer got to connect in person. It impacted our social lives. It impacted the, the office water cooler and the benefits of that. But now we've adapted to developing digital tools and interactions that allow us to become personal. And we're finding that these are actually quite effective to stay connected and build relationships and community. And this is not gonna change. It was about salespeople using digital to survive. You know, I used to visit customers in person. I'd better learn how to use Zoom. <laughs> and so this was survival mechanisms and we were just using digital and bolting them onto our traditional sales process. But now we've moved to a virtual sales culture. And this means that it's not traditional sales using digital. It is now a virtual sales culture, which is remote and highly social on social networks and platforms. 
So this is the future and is where we're moving and it's what we need to build our skill sets, our strategy, as well as our hiring and recruitment process around. Finding people who are effective at this virtual sales process or who are open and able to develop in that area. So we've been talking about sales enablement a lot in the last few years. And so from this perspective is, uh, from, the, from the sales enablement perspective, is we're now moving into customer enablement. And so as we're moving into customer enablement, what that means is that before we're giving the tools to our salespeople to interact with the customer and push them through our sales process, and today we're using digital tools and platforms to engage customers at the right time in the right context and give them the information they need to make their decision. And through our platform, we're connecting them and our sales teams. And our CRM becomes an extension of that. Cold prospecting and pitching to survive because we need business now because we've been disrupted is now moved into relationship and brand building. So this is a, a really important piece from this perspective is that relationship and brand building is long-term, long-game focused. Like John referred to earlier, it was actually about creating content and having conversations that establish relationships that have longevity in them. And this is how we win and rise above the noise in the digital first environment. We then move from digital savvy, which is what we've been focusing on, like educating our people to understand and educating ourselves how to use all these new tools, to now digital disciplines. It's great we know how to use Zoom or LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever platform we need to sell digitally, but now we need to create daily disciplines to make it consistent and part of who we are. And then lastly, as we move from transactions, so transactionally trying to cut deals, to realizing that how we establish ourselves digitally as a true thought leader is to become a trusted partner in the marketplace. So these are, although we're only, we've gone through this massive disruption, we're, this new level of change, I believe is more of a trajectory now. And this is what's happening in 2021 and beyond. So what's happening in sales? So quickly, 49, Gartner did a recent study with chief sales officers. And here's what they found. 49% of sales leaders say accelerating early pipeline and lead generation and management tactics are vital. So what we're looking at is, yes, last year we focused on retaining the business we can keep and have and making sure we take care of those great clients, which we still need to do that. But now the marketplace has changed. There's new winners, and from that, we need to focus on new leads and new, new pipeline development. There's also a renewed focus on new business and new markets. And this is more important for me, I think, for all of us, is 57% say that they're partially prepared or unprepared to sell virtually to the level they previously sold to traditionally. 41% also say that focusing on sales enablement that supports virtual selling is vital. When I think of sales enablement, that supports virtual selling. It's not just content, it's actually training, strategy, best practices, and that virtual sales competency map. So when Dennis Covey and I wrote our book, Real Results in a Virtual Economy, How to Future Proof Your Business, one of the things we looked at is we really broke down what we thought was the new virtual sales competency map. And so this map is really what I see, the sales professional and sales leader of the future. This is the context and how we have to look at our sales organization and our sales career. Traditionally, we focused on sales map mastery, all the core competencies of the sales professional, sales process, one-to-one -one communication skills, soft skills, closing skills, proposal writing skills, negotiation skills, uh, lead nurturing skills, all very important still. But with that said, it's not enough and I'm finding many traditional sales winners who are really great in those traditional tools have struggled so far because they have to now translate that into the digital. So we've got these other pieces that overlap. Number one is virtual communications. And I'll go into these in detail, some of the competences in each. And my goal is as I go through these rather rapidly, is for you to almost use this as a checklist to say, if you're on this per personally as a sales professional, where am I at personally? Do I have these skill sets? And if you're a sales leader, then think about your organization. Where are my people? Do they possess these things or do I have to build them? So virtual communications, social networking skills, fluency with technology in general and the ability to utilize it, learn it and adapt to it. Then we've got virtual soft skills and cognitive skills, which is really 
how do I connect in a digital fashion online meaningfully and build relationships? And connected to that is right brain selling. So let's talk about social selling first. So this was a study recently done by LinkedIn, and they found that social selling leaders create 45% more opportunities than their peers with a low SSI, which is a social selling uh, score that LinkedIn does. They also found that social selling leaders are 51% more likely to reach quota, and 78% of social sellers outsell their peers who don't use social media. And for me, being a great social salesperson means I use it in a discipline, disciplined fashion daily, right? Daily. It doesn't mean I'm on there all day, but it means two to three times a day I might be in there and I'm using it effectively daily. I've got a strategy and a plan. So social networking, what are some of the competencies that you want to look at for yourself or your people? Number one, online network building. So are these people consistently expanding, but also nurturing the key nodes in their personal online network? Proactive online prospectors, are they proactively out there developing new relationships and conversations? Content creation, I believe the great social networkers today, a big part of conversation and relationship building credibility comes from the content we create. It doesn't have to be a 52 page white paper. It could be literally a one paragraph update on LinkedIn that shares your insights. Then content curation, great social networkers are great at finding great content and sharing it that's relevant for their audience. Then great conversationalists and really adapt adept at building relationships using social. So this is the one of the key leading competencies that we need to develop proactively. We can't do this casually. So then technology fluency. Of course, we need to be able to speak in tech as sales professionals. It's gone are the days, especially if you say sell technology, to say things like, well, I only know enough about this tech to sell it. The minute we start saying that, I believe we limit our ability to actually sell effectively to C-level decision makers. I believe that it's up to us to maybe not be able to understand the technology so well that you could program something or implement it. That's maybe what your engineering team's there for, but we need to understand it to the level that we understand intimately how it can impact our clients' businesses or the community and be able to communicate to that in a business ROI language for business leaders and decision makers. But overall, we need to be good at interpreting data. We need to be good systems and process thinkers. So I need to understand process well enough to be able to implement it, for instance, into my nimble CRM. Proactive and curious problem solvers, because technology always comes with the challenges. We understand the sales tech stack that our team gives us. We don't lean away from it, but if we've got two or three cool cool tools that our company has given us, we know how to maximize it. So if, if we're using Vidyard for video, do we understand all the ways I can use it to communicate on different platforms with customers? Capable of assessing tech tools, because if you're a sales professional working on your own or for a small business, you're probably gonna be responsible for finding the tech you need, assessing its value and implementing it, and then just learns new programs and tools because you know what works today and what got us here probably won't get us there in the future. And so we have to be open to learning technology on a regular basis. So in essence, this needs to become your new hobby. So if you wanna look at an area we wanna study as a sales pro, I believe no matter what business you're in, you're now in the technology business and as sales professionals, we can't just say, oh, that's for the techies or, oh, I don't understand this new tech stuff. We're gonna lose credibility and we're also gonna lose opportunities. So video meetings, let's talk about virtual sales meetings, remote meetings and remote digital communications, another key competency. So this study was done by Gong and they actually, Gong is a AI based, artificial intelligence based system which analyzes phone conversations and video conversations and then maps win rates of deals based upon that and based upon the patterns of speech, conversation, what's mentioned, it's a very cool tool. You might want to check it out. So what they found is after analyzing 100,000 sales meetings, that for closed one deals, webcams were used 41% more frequently throughout the sales cycle. So why I share this is that I believe that being on video and communicating remotely through web meetings is a key core competency that we can't take casually or fumble our way through. We need to become expert broadcasters as sales professionals and as sales leaders. 
So other parts of virtual communications are even just information dissemination, using platforms like Slack or other tools to effectively disseminate information, digital broadcast capability. So, you know, do I understand the key tools that are used today? So for instance, I'm a Zoom guy. I use Zoom by preference most of the time, but today I'm on GoToWebinar with Nimble. And the reason why I'm going to webinar is because that's the tool my partner Nimble uses. And so I need to understand not just the tools I love, but the ones that are used in the marketplace. Then I'm gonna look at multi-format, multi-screen, multi-platform writing school skills. What that means is what works in an email does not work in a Twitter direct message. And what works in a Twitter direct message does not work in a, in a WhatsApp text. We have to understand how to shift our writing and our sales style based upon the platform we're in. And then of course, like I said, you've not just gotta be a good on-screen communicator, you gotta be a good on-screen entertainer. Because as you're looking at this screen right now, and we're, you're sitting through this webinar, I'm actually, and John and the Nimble team is competing with Netflix on whether or not we're the, interesting enough to keep your attention. And so that's the reality around screen consumption of content. So then I talked about virtual soft skills and cognitive skills. And so this is, or further, right brain sales skills. So let's talk about right brain selling and why it's important. Left brain is cut and paste, repeatable processes, um, filling in templates, uh, doing research. Like I believe research is a very left brain thing. I can go out and decide I need to find a phone number of somebody and I can dig around the internet and I can probably find that and spend half an hour doing it or maybe 15 minutes if I'm really effective and then I can cold call them. Or uh, find a way, and that, that activity is very repetitive, it's mundane, it's very rote type of behavior, doesn't involve a lot of creativity in most cases. And what we found is things like that are become automated. So I know in Nimble, if I want that phone number, I can click a nice little special button and out pops a suggested phone number and email for that person. <laughs> uh, and of course I pay for that service, but the point is, is that that has now replaced 15 minutes of left brain activity. And, and so why I share this is there's so many things that are now automating through artificial intelligence and process automation in sales, that's no longer a thing we can do. And in fact, that's slowly eroding maybe what we did in a day. So if you spent 10 hours a day selling and three or five or six hours a day of that was spent in these very robotic, cut and paste, left brain activities, sales people and sales forces of the future are no longer spending time like that. If you're doing that, you're gonna be replaced. The majority of your value is that, you're gonna be replaced by artificial intelligence. You're gonna be replaced by automation. The only safe place, I believe, and the true value we add as sales professionals is doing things that can't be scaled or automated. And this is trend spotting. This is pop culture and business culture awareness and understanding how to create content and have conversations around world events and business events. It's solid research skills and curiosity. It's collaboration skills. It's emotional intelligence, right? And social intelligence, the ability to assess and connect with other individuals and have nuanced conversations that build value. Dynamic thinking, right? Out of the box thinking. And of course, a myriad of other right brain sales skills. In our book, we go through 27 different types of right brain sales skills that I believe we need to build as sales professionals so we become indispensable in the future. So then the last piece is once we have all these skills and we've nailed this competency map down and we're selling digitally and remotely effectively, and this is what I wanna finish off with and open up for Q&A with, with John and, and everybody else here, is that we also need to think about time and energy optimization. Because one of the things is that us as humans we're not really meant to sit in front of a screen, uh, you know, nine, 10, 14 hours a day, five days a week. We're meant to move around. We are meant to connect with other, other humans in a meaningful way. And especially if you've just started working remotely from home, um, we can overburn, right? We can, we can really uh, overdo it in many cases, or just start to feel lonely and detached. So this was a study that came out, you know, a few months ago, but it's interesting, they found that 69% of employees are experiencing burnout symptoms while working from home. And that's up 20% from a similar survey in early May. So just from like May to July, I think, this, this shifted. And today it hasn't changed much. There is this fatigue from working remote, especially if you don't have the best practices in place. So 
Despite work burnout, the majority, 59%, are taking less time off than they normally would, and 42% of those still working from home are not planning to take off time to decompress. This is heading for really, uh, in my opinion, some emotional health issues, right? In addition to this, productivity issues in organizations. So as individuals and sales leaders, we have to proactively think about how I can create a healthier remote work environment where my team can really over the long term succeed and I can. So here's some virtual leadership. If you've re recently listened to my podcast, uh, you know, this will sound a little familiar because I covered this recently, but I'm going to try to kind of approach this with a slightly different context. So as a leader, I do believe that our team's mental health and mindset is our number one priority. That sales in particular is a mind game. It's a really about mindset and mentality. And so with that said, as leaders, we need to set the table so that our team can effectively operate at their optimum mental health levels. Now, individually, we need to take responsible for, responsibility for this as well. But I believe speaking to you leaders on this call, I've got to really ask, you know, uh, or kind of walk you through this and go, am I doing these things to really help my team? So number one, provide sales enablement tools that automate and improve task efficiency. So reduce the cut and paste. Reduce the mundane tasks. Reduce the route things that really don't engage our people and don't actually help them do well what, they, what they're great at, which is sell and talk to customers. We should be maximizing customer and human interaction time for them and minimizing mundane admin screen time. Most of the things that are mundane can be automated if we invest in the tools. And even investing $50, $100, $200, $300, $500 dollars a head per sales professional, even per month, in these types of tools, sounds like a lot. But what would it look like if they were 30% more productive? And what would it look like if your employee retention went up by 10 or 20 or 30% as a result? So the other piece is shorten your meetings and reduce irrelevant attendance. So we, we do have screen fatigue. And so really look at, I know this meeting used to be an hour, our sales meeting was an hour when it was offline. Can I make it 30 minutes and really engaging online? And if there's multiple departments having meetings, can I reduce relevant attend, irrelevant attendance for my team? You know, the old saying is this meeting could have been an email or it could have been a Slack message or it could have been recorded and listened to at another time, right? Number three, which seems like counter almost the opposite of number two, is increase your check-ins. So as a sales leader, casual conversational check-ins more frequently, even if they're just five minutes, are really important because our remote people or digitally, physically disconnected but digitally social people who are working remote, often left alone for long periods of time, start to wonder, even high performers start to wonder, am I doing my job? Do they still love me? <laughs> uh, is everything good? Is, am I on track? And so these check-ins help us keep them emotionally on track. Forced digital blackout periods. So one of the things to help our people not overburn is stop sending them emails at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night as sales leaders uh, or messages. You know, this is great tools available uh, through Gmail, uh, you know, or uh, if you're using Boomerang or anything else like that, where you can actually schedule your emails. So great, you want to work at nine o'clock at night because you took the afternoon off with your kids. That's fantastic. But now you're blasting your team at nine o'clock at night with emails and they're stressed out, right? Because now they can't sleep and think about what they're going to do tomorrow. Instead, you can schedule your emails to hit their inbox at 8.55 a.m. tomorrow morning. And with your team, encourage them, like when they're on holiday or when you give them the day off, is allow them to really shut off the digital and encourage them to do so. And let them know it's not okay they're texting you on their day off. So start virtual copy groups. So one of my clients, what they did with their team that used to collaborate a lot, they've got 16 different locations, they started taking sales professionals from all these different locations and once a week they get together for 30 minutes for a virtual coffee and just talk about the weather, about what's happening in the business, what's happening with their kids, and get to know each other. And it's really helped create and grow a culture, a strong remote culture, where they're not feeling disconnected just because they're not physically together. Of course, invest in virtual remote health programs and equipment. So something as simple as a, you know, a, a Gaia membership so that your team can log online whenever they want and take yoga classes and send them a mat and a couple weights and a stretch band 
and maybe some you know virtual team building on you know what we've done that week as far as exercise or health and wellness just little things like that to just support them in the remote environment right um, you know maybe you have a huge sales contest and you know the winner wins a peloton bike part of it is to put a focus on personal health on top of digital effectiveness because it can be eroded limit non-urgent communications to work hours like i said and as leaders the best way to get our team to live a balanced and proficient and effective digital first career is to also lead it so if we're exhausted all the time and burnt out and behind and overworked it's really hard for us to lead our people the same way because as walt disney liked to say and i'm going to move to questions literally after this is a leader tells a story about what he or she values by what they do not by what they say so kind of wrapping up here what i want to do for our audience on here today and anybody who actually watches this is i've got two opportunities here number one is our book real results in a virtual economy of course is available on amazon uh, it's also available off our website realresultsvirtualeconomy.com if you order the book and you send me a receipt I will email you access, a 30-day free access to our program, Virtual Sales Meetings That Close Deals, helping you sell and learn to sell remotely through uh, video-based tools. You know, whether you're using Microsoft's tools or GoToMeeting or WebEx uh, or Zoom, this program will help you succeed. So $79 value, it'll come free for 30 days if you order the book. Uh, if you order from realresultsvirtualeconomy.com, it'll take longer to get to you, but I'll autograph it for you. Amazon, of course, if you're on Prime, you'll probably have the book in two days. So that's really up to you. But remember to email me your receipt and I'll personally make sure that Lynn and I get you into our program for free. So that wraps up my offer and I'm gonna pass this back over to John. Well, first off, Shane, um, I, I think that your presentation succinctly shared why it's so important that modern sellers uh, start to meet their customers where their customers are having conversations for their customers growth and to do it in a way that's not the old school bag of integrum sales but really with an intent to serve those people and help them grow i think that social media has shifted the way that we work play buy and sell and that companies that aren't shifting with it are going to die and i love that quote from jack wells where you uh where you shared that um, for those that are, are not already subscribed to Nimble, if you want to check it out, feel free to sign up at uh, nimble.com. There's a 30-day trial. Normally, it's two weeks. You go to Webinar 30 and sign up. And if you decide that Nimble adds value to your uh, sales workflow, uh, you can get 40% off the first three months using the code John40. Um, let's go to the next slide. So. Um, this is the Q&A time, and I really encourage you all to uh, ask questions because, again, that's how we all learn. Uh, Shane, one of the questions that I have from the audience is, we, we've done sales this way forever, and I don't know if we can change. And I'm not sure our customers are social. How do we become modern sellers in a traditional uh, industry like manufacturing so i think one of the things is that you know often you know i've had people in traditional industries say my customers aren't on social but if we look at the numbers you know we're talking two billion plus people on uh facebook alone and we we look at um you know the numbers on linkedin are, are astronomical right in the hundreds of billions now is the reality is our customers are on social. We just haven't found a way to engage them and be find them and get them involved in the conversation. And so, you know, part of it is A, is before we say, hey, they're not on it, is really start to dig, because we may find that they are on it. They are on these platforms. We've just got to get creative on how we reach them. Um, you know, one of the examples is sales, senior sales leaders. You know, not a place that I would think I would find them on Facebook, but when I run my um, sales performance forum, my live events here in Vancouver on a monthly basis, I ran ads targeting people who were fans of Nimble CRM, who were fans of Salesforce.com, who were fans of Microsoft Dynamics, who lived in Vancouver and invited them out to these events through advertising. And lo and behold, they showed up, they registered, they interacted with the content. 
it, I just didn't know they were there, I had a way to find them. And so uh, targeting and, and, and digging deeper. But the other side is that you can also train your clients to consume and use social. So when I first started blogging and podcasting many years ago, very few CEOs and VPs of sales were reading blogs or listening to podcasts. But I would, through email, because I already connected with them, say, hey, John, here's my latest uh, podcast I did on uh, you know, leading uh, the digital sales organization and uh, thought you'd find this useful and just sent a link through. And what I found after a period of time is by almost spoon feeding, and pardon the term, my social content, these senior leaders started subscribing and engaging in the content. So you might have to lead them a little bit to the social content. You might have to hand them the YouTube video <laughs> through a text or through email, but over a period of time, you can actually engage them. What I would also say is as the demographics change, within these sort of legacy industries, with younger, more tech savvy people coming into play, what you'll find is that if you start to build these digital assets and footprints now, not in the next 10 years, but in the next year, two, three years, you'll find that you're gonna have a bigger market share or mind share. Finally, the biggest thing that we've got coming out of this pandemic, I believe, is that everybody's 70 year old grandmother knows or 80 year old grandmother knows how to use zoom <laughs> and probably facebook messenger too so i don't believe there's that many people who aren't on these platforms as we think they are i think there's a huge opportunity to get in first and educate them long you, answer i know <laughs> you, you know shane i i think that we need to drop the word social and really adopt the word maybe digital or modern because I think that, uh, do you remember when the internet first came out where uh, all the companies were named E this and I that, E toys, I contact, uh, et cetera. And that was because the internet was new. And uh, and so we focused on it. But when it, in, when it became ubiquitous, in other words, when the pipe was always on, because back in the day I had a 300, 1200, uh, 3600 baud modems, uh, and I did dial up or get DSL and it wasn't always on. But now that the internet has become ubiquitous, it has disappeared. It's become transparent. We don't think about it. When you turn on the faucet in your bathroom, you don't think about the recirculation and the boiler and all that stuff that makes hot water possible. You just expect it to be hot water. And so social 10 years ago, when it first came out, was kind of new and people didn't really understand its application to the customer life cycle or to business or to selling. But in reality, sales has always been social. People buy from people they like, know, and trust. And in the old days, it was getting to know people by doing our homework before or when we go in somebody's office, looking at the walls, look at the books they read, the degree of the school they went to, the knickknacks they collect in order to find areas of commonality, to share that with that person, to develop the intimacy and trust, to get them to open up to us about their business issues, which as a professional we can then solve. And social basically provides that today and because it's become ubiquitous, I think it's disappearing. And so even though we talked about and wrote books about social serum and social selling 10 years ago or five years ago, I think that we need to talk about really the it's, it's become the norm and you just have to do it. And if you don't think about the social aspect, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or whatever, and just think about the digital aspect, you know that no matter who your customer is, they probably will Google you or their, your, your company before they meet with you, right? That's pretty standard. We all Google each other. And I think anybody listening to this webinar today should Google themselves. And if you don't show up on the first page, you need to fix that. And the easiest tip that I have for you to fix you showing up is to build a Wikipedia page for yourself. And if you build a Wikipedia page for yourself, including an avatar and cited uh, articles, et cetera, you will show up on the first page and you can start controlling how people see you and how people see you affects your brand and your net, your network, which is your net worth. And so I think the takeaway I got from your material is it's really not about just Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn. It's about a philosophy that overrides your purpose on this planet, which is not to bag into customers, but to help them grow that services the new sales. and the need to nurture and grow your team as human beings and to empower them with tools to be as effective as they can so they can listen and engage the customer as, as, as best they can and on whatever channel is most effective for them and to use digital tools to enhance themselves, but to always remember to be more human because the more digital we get, the more human we need to be. 
and you're going to stand out by being human because we're all getting too much automated emails that basically blast us with all this bullshit and really it's the human ones that stand out uh to me what do you think i 100 percent. and and you know i i know it's almost a cliche to say this because uh, so many you know people say it, but i it, it is about doing things that don't necessarily scale and that's being a human on the internet and and i think that's a really really key piece 100 percent agree uh you know it makes me also think too is that you know the thought about like my clients not digital or or remote or not using these tools so for me when the when things kind of shifted and all these live events were canceled i had a few of my bigger clients say i guess we're just not doing this anymore and i said whoa 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 i've got a creative idea because <laughs> i didn't want to lose the business let me teach you and your team how to use digital tools to run events and I literally walked them through how to use Zoom and Eventbrite and all these tools to actually, so I helped my client use this platform so that I could keep doing business with them, you know? And even I think about a manufacturing plant, you know, really exciting. What if you introduced your uh, client to virtual reality? What if you walked the floor with a GoPro 360 camera and then you couriered your client a really simple uh, Google Cardboard setup and taught them how to use it and now they can have a 360 virtual 3D tour of your plant while you talk to them and they get to experience a technology they've never experienced before and you actually bring them into a new way of thinking and doing business and it's highly memorable. So I, I think that we can become digital leaders for those around us too, right? And so I think that there's, there's an opportunity there. Amen. So I had some feedback from Jen, uh, a fellow Canadian, uh, and she said, have you thought about uh, making your books uh, audio? Yes, we have. Uh, it's, a, it's a priority. Uh, you can even tweet my co-author, Dennis Covier, at D-E-N-I-S-C-A-U-V-I-E-R, and say, hey, Dennis, when are you and Shane going to put out your audio book? Because I've been, I've been wanting to get us on this like now. Uh, and we are doing it. It'll be prioritized in the next 60 days. We will have an audio book out, but right now it's Kindle uh, and it's uh, it's paperback. Awesome. And Shane, how can people get a hold of you? So how to reach me uh, at Shane Gibson on Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, and uh, and LinkedIn. Uh, you can of course visit Real Results Virtual Economy to check out our site. Uh, as well, uh, I'm on Spotify. And on iTunes, if you just type in Shane Gibson podcast, if you're looking for audio right away, Jen, there's like 80 episodes in there. Uh, and that's a great way to get to know me as well and, and learn and, and hear more of my rants on social and sales. And uh, for those that want to connect with me, uh, you can just Google me and uh, connect with me on whatever channel is most effective for you. Uh, or email me, uh, jon at nimble.com is my email. Let me know how we can help you grow. And uh, with that, uh, I think that we are uh, a wrap. Shane, uh, uh, send us away with some parting thoughts. You know, I, I think it's really about being sociable. And this is what like the first book I wrote on social media was Stephen Jagger way back in 2009. But when I say sociable, sociable was about using the internet to get off the internet or using the internet to develop deeper relationships. So once you, one, your quickest path to ROI in social, in my opinion, is to take these casual connections like our tweets or our Instagram messages and get someone into a Zoom meeting or on a phone call and spend some time getting to know them at a human level. And eventually when we can, meeting them in person. And that's how you develop the, re the ROI is the deeper human real interactions that's what it's really about and and shane isn't that again how we met and uh and how we've maintained our relationship heck we live in different countries and uh yet we've uh, we've been able to maintain our close friendship all this time i tell people often that relationships uh the bulk of the energy in in developing a relationship happens uh getting it from zero to 60 just like a car just like a rocket ship uh, but then once it is at 60 or in orbit, it takes much less, but it does require some engagement. And so for those of you that want to practice modern digital uh, engagement, and this doesn't just apply to salespeople, 
is to uh, build identities in all the places where your customers, your prospects, and ideally their influencers are having conversations about how to be better, smarter, faster in the areas of your promise of products and services. And uh, build a nice avatar and uh, landing page there and then start sharing content. But most importantly, you need to then listen and engage the people because if you're just putting bait on the hook and you're not pulling the hook when there's a nibble, uh, and reeling that relationship in for a conversation, then you're really not taking it to the next level. And I encourage you to use things beyond LinkedIn because LinkedIn is just your business lobby. And I really believe that the softer places like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook are great places to build relationships on, on the areas of what I call the five Fs of life, family, friend, food, family, and fellowship. These are the human interaction points that develop intimacy and trust. And uh, and share not just business stuff in your in your social identity. Share a little bit of your humanity because I think we connect along our hearts and souls and our desires. And so with that, uh, Shane, it's always a pleasure to hear you speak and to learn your uh, to get a part of your wisdom. And for those of you that attended today, thank you. Uh, we really appreciate you taking time to uh, to connect uh, and spend your valuable time with us. And one last thing, uh, Tara uh, just uh, bought your book, Shane. So uh, oh, fantastic. You, you have a new customer. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Have an amazing uh, week and weekend. Um, and Nadia, thanks for running the webinar. Um, Shane, let's talk soon. Hey, thank you very much. Bye-bye.